Good morning, dear friends. It is so nice for me to meet you again on this wonderful new day. And as we are getting ready to face this day and its challenges and uh, uh, things to do, and Lord, may we, and I pray that the Lord will bless you with the better understanding of His ways, and you will live according to His way and glorify His name. So today's meditation is based on the gospel according to St. John chapter 21 verses 1 to 14 where it is recorded that uh, seven of his twelve disciples were together once. And this happened after the second appearance of Jesus after his resurrection to his disciples. And then again he disappeared. And um, the disciples still, though they were convinced that Jesus is alive, they were not very certain of their own future. And so not knowing, and in that times of uncertainty, you know, these disciples must have been meeting in different places, in groups, and talking about the events of the last few days. And um, while Peter was with the other six disciples, suddenly in that moment of uncertainty, he blurted out as usual, fellows, I am going fishing. And all other six disciples agreed with him and all seven of them went into the lake of Galilee and the whole night they were there. Now, it is very certain, beyond any shadow of doubt, that Jesus Christ was alive. Because we see him sitting, talking, eating, drinking on the shore of the Lake of Galilee. And with these, with these, with these uh, nail prints in his hands and on his feet. And um, the occasion of this appearance was after a night of fruitless labor, the whole night they were in the lake, casting nets again and again, pulling it back, and the whole night went off like that. And at the end, what was left? They were returning and looking at their instruments. All that they had was the same net, but now with a wet net and empty net. Weary and exhausted, body and... Um, empty baskets, and it was a terrible night for them to remember. They were disappointed, discouraged, frustrated, tired, physically and in spirit as well. You feel that way at times, don't you? With all the best efforts in education, job and family, you found that uh, life is still empty and there is no meaning or purpose in life or even in living. And it was at this point that Jesus suddenly appeared and he was on the shore waiting as if he was waiting for these disciples to return. And this is the scene. And so on this uh, event in their lives, let us uh, give a few minutes thoughts as we meditate uh, and uh, glean the lessons that we can learn for our own lives. 
from the experiences of these seven disciples. Now consider, first of all, Peter and John. You know, two opposing characters. The master loved them both without making any distinction. John was the first to recognize Jesus, but Peter was the first to spring into the water and struggle to get closer to Jesus. John was the first to see, but Peter was the first to act. And John's gentle, loving um, spirit was the first to recognize him as Jesus. But Peter's fiery, impulsive nature was the quickest to move. We see these two elsewhere too. John was the first to reach the sepulchre of Jesus. But Peter was the first to enter in to the sepulchre. John the first to believe that Jesus Christ was risen. But Peter was the first to greet this risen Lord Jesus Christ. John is an example of a thoughtful wisdom. But Peter is an example of, uh, of, uh, example of, uh, uh, of uh, loving zeal for the Lord. You know, as far as Jesus Christ is concerned, all are helpful. Both of them were helpful, helpful uh, to one another and needful for the body of Jesus Christ, the church, for his kingdom to be built. A loving, tender heart, always quick to perceive the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and also the quick to perceive the presence of the Lord. And the Lord needed both of them to build his kingdom after he is gone. So that is the first thing that we see, two opposing characters, but to both were needed for the kingdom to be built. Jesus has use for all these, these people who have different characteristics of their own. A life that is surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus, it, it, it doesn't matter uh, out of these two which quality you possess. A life that is completely surrendered, Jesus Christ can take you and use whatever you are for his glory and honor. The second thought is, Jesus appeared in their labor. He does not despise any labor, any work, neither anyone who does any work. Oh, you are doing that work, you know, which is not very clean, which is not very good. Uh, and Jesus never, never do that. He does not despise any labor, neither does he despise any laborer. Uh, whatever you are called to do, or whatever you are trained to do, he expects us to do, or you, he expects you to do it for his glory. The only condition is, whatever that job may be, do it all for his glory. It is unto the Lord that we are doing. And Jesus, remember, Jesus himself was a carpenter. He did not produce the food by performing some kind of a miracle. They all sat at the dining table and then he did some magical movement and suddenly food appeared. No, he never did that. He labored 
and his hands were toughened by the handling of both the wood and the tools to make tables or chairs or bed or whatever was required of him to do. He certainly, Father Joseph died a little early, leaving about, uh, uh, about six or seven siblings along with their mother. And uh, my friends, Jesus understands your hard labor and what it is costing you. He knows when you are engaged in hard works and doesn't earn enough for a family of seven or eight. That is hard. He understands. His hands were dirtied with the handling, with the work, the kind of work that he, he did. Every morning he begins his work and evening he comes and cleans himself. And he knows what it is to have, uh, to have not enough, sufficient for everybody. That's why the song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. He understands everyone. He understands a laborer's life. He understands a slave's work. He understands at the same time the masters. He understands all of us. And in our own levels, he is able to come and be a comfort to us as he leads us. So he appeared in their labor. And I want to encourage you, expect the appearance of Jesus to you in a miraculous way, in your struggles, in your labor, which you think is not producing enough. He comes to you in your labor. And he wants to be with you. And thirdly, you know, the miracle of that night and that morning. By the morning came, they all returned, and you know the story, and uh, empty, and exhausted, disappointed. But then, by the word of Jesus Christ, the Master, they cast their net, and what a catch they had. Now that miracle also is a parable of work they were to do in the future. Here are seven fishermen, well equipped and well acquainted with waters and well trained in the job. They all were fishermen. Toiling all night, caught nothing and returned empty handed. Servants of the kingdom of God may be well equipped in training and in the knowledge of uh, uh, the laws and God's word and uh, the whatever knowledge they needed, they possessed. But in no real success, the kingdom builders, the servants who goes out and preach the gospel to every creature, in certain areas, certain places, it is very difficult to get immediate result. And, uh, but no real, uh, real breakthroughs and no real success many times. It is only the presence of the Lord and His command that makes success sure and certain. So please remember this. An activity based on mere human impulse and sympathy was fruitless and will always be fruitless. Life based on God's word will be an immediate success. Because there you experience the presence 
and you also experience and hear the command of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even when you read God's word, always remember, bring God into your labor. Bring Jesus into your, your situation, into your job. Bring Jesus in your business. And let him be the senior partner with you. And when his presence is there, you also will hear his command, what to do, the decisions to be made. Many times we are puzzled and we uh, do not know exactly how to go about it and what kind of decision to make. But listen to him and make sure that you hear him. And accordingly you act. You act upon his word you will succeed. And fourthly and lastly, the blessing and success come by casting the old net in a new way, in a new direction. You know, it is the same with the gospel kingdom building. We preach no new message. It is the same old gospel. We are not allowed to change it. We are not allowed to dilute the message. And we are to preach the same old message, but in a new age and time, it needs new castings. And that's what happened in the sea that day, that morning. It is the same net, the same boat, and the same sea, same waters, and same places. But according to the direction of Jesus Christ, they cast the net where Jesus told them. And that brought them the success. So the gospel is the same, unchanging, and eternal. But the forms are fresh and the methods may be fresh. Let us not hesitate to adopt any fresh and new methods of presenting the same old gospel message. And trust the Lord to give you the success. And I tell you, you will enjoy greater success in the days to come when you bring Jesus Christ himself into your ministry, into your business, into your job, and into your labor, in whatever you are doing. Let Jesus be there as the master and Lord of your life and your job. And see how successful you will be for his glory and when you are succeed, when you succeed, never forget to give all honor and glory and praise to your God. Amen. Heavenly Father, those who heard this message, this meditation today, let them experience something new about your presence. Let them hear your voice, giving them the direction. And beyond any shadow of doubt, they will know that they are serving a risen Lord, Jesus Christ. In whatever they do, by doing it for your glory, you are serving you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is a great day. Enjoy your day. Amen.